Chapter 88 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Dream on sure enough, the arrogance of Zhang Hanfang was invincible. That biological big brother of hers was defeated after blocking her for a few rounds. His clothes were being grabbed by Mingyuan under her instructions. She went through the rockeries. Soon, she passed the end of the rockery. She didn't expect that there would be someone at this side of the curved bridge. When she saw Xu Huan standing on the fence, she was scared out of her wits. When she discovered that the person looked familiar, Zhang Zirong was also behind her. Yu, Zhang Hanfang pointed at Xu Huan with surprise. Then, she looked at Zhang Zirong, you too. She was the clearest about her brother's morality. If she discovered him alone with another woman, only one association would appear in her mind. And, the one in front of her had a special identity. She wasn't an ordinary maid. She was Gu Xiran's pampered maid. That she couldn't speak for a moment and just stood there in surprise. Xu Huan was disheartened with the incomparable tragedy of her life. She had decided to listen to fate. Because of that, she felt peaceful. She looked once smilingly at Zhang Hanfang and exchanged a polite greeting, such a coincidence. Miss Zhang also came to enjoy the lotus. Now, she wasn't the maid of last time. Instead, she was Gu household's second young mistress. Naturally, she should have the demeanor of the host. Zhang Hanfang regained from the shock and said overbearingly, quit acting. What are you doing here secretly with my big brother? Xu Huan frowned, Miss Zhang, please be more prudent when you speak. I'm enjoying the scenery here. What did it have to do with your big brother? Please, don't carelessly put me in the same line with him. Even if you don't care about your brother's reputation, you need to care about your own reputation. No matter what, such an unreasonable speculation shouldn't come out of the mouth of an unmarried girl. Last time when Zhang Hanfang saw her, she, ZHF, was angry because of her, SH, neither servile nor overbearing in calm attitude. Now, she was stumped for words by her sharp words. She was about to flip out when she heard Zhang Zirong faintly say, Right, little sister, that mind of yours that isn't contaminated with any dirt shouldn't have these thoughts. How sad would mother be when she got to know this? Quit using mother to pressure me. Since you two dared to do it, then, don't be afraid that people would talk about it. Zhang Hanfang raised an eyebrow and looked contemptuously at Xu Huan, truly an eloquent maid. Last time, my big cousin brother protected you and said that I have no right no meddle with your Gu household's members. This time, I caught you seducing my big brother. Could it be that I still can't teach you a lesson? Ming Luan. Come here and tell her how those not well dot behaved fox maids were taken care of. After Ming Luan was being called, she looked like she was in a difficult position at Zhang Zero. Then, she looked at Xu Huan and advised, Miss, it's better we return. Pa. What answered her was a slap in the face. Zhang Hanfang said angrily, I raised you for nothing. Biting the hand that feeds you. Ming Luan covered her face and didn't dare to argue nor cry. Tears were only in her eyes and she felt very grievanced. After Zhang Hanfang finished scolding, she turned her hand and wanted to give her another slap with the back of her hand. However, this time, Zhang Zirong grabbed her hand, aren't you done causing trouble? Here is not at home. If you don't feel that it's shameful, I feel that it's shameful. Let go. What did it have to do with you if I slap my maid? Zhang Zirong threw her hand away in disdain and said, do you have a brain or not? She was persuading you for your own good and you still beat her. Zhang Hanfang sneered, she did it for you all right. Xu Huan saw that these two people wanted to quarrel again without care to whatever place they were, she felt a headache. If it was normally, she would be happy to watch it aside and only take it as entertainment. But, she truly wasn't in the mood today. She only wanted to go to a quiet place. She knew that the heavens wouldn't let people's wishes come true. Instead, she lost the quietness she longed for. However, since the two of them were happy quarreling, 
then, it had nothing to do with her. It was better for her to take the opportunity and slip away. She just turned, but she didn't expect her sleeve would be pulled from behind. Although, they had entered autumn now, the weather was still hot. The sun was piercing during the day. Hence, she still wore the gauze dress of the summer. The material was very thin. After being pulled hard like this, she heard the sound of the sleeve being thorn. A big hole had been teared from the sleeve. Immediately, it was silent. Zhang Hanfang was apparently startled. She didn't expect this to happen. Xu Huan frowned slightly. She raised her hand and looked at her torn sleeve. She revealed a self-dot-mocking smile. Before, she didn't understand how even a weak girl in the wuxia novels could easily tore off their clothes to bandage a wound. Now, she understood. The ancient clothes were exquisite, but they were not strong enough. Especially, such material as gauze which could easily be torn. Although, she understood, she still run her hand lightly over the sleeve. Then, she turned smilingly back, looked once at Zhang Hanfang and said, Miss Zhang, your strength is really not ordinary. It isn't that you had practiced, right? As long as it was a girl, regardless of how she looked like or what her temperament was, they wouldn't want to be sturdy, well dot build and strong. Hence, this sentence said with a faint tone and full of sarcasm was more destructive than any scolding and humiliation. It made that always arrogant face of Zhang Hanfang turn red, then white and then pale. She was extremely embarrassed. She couldn't argue that she was delicate and weak because that half-dot-torn sleeve was still in her hand. After the initial shock, when he saw that always pretty and arrogant face of his little sister reveal a completely different look for the first time since ever, Zhang Zirong couldn't hold it in anymore and laughed while holding his belly. The more he laughed, the louder the laughter was. Not to mention that he was rocking back and forth. Even his tears fell. Even that made Minglewan wanted to laugh but didn't dare to. Her face wrinkled and looked strange. While he wiped his tears, he panted from laughing, I didn't know you were so strong that this sleeve had been torn by you. Don't blame me later for it. I don't have such strength like you. You too, Zhang Hanfang was very annoyed. She threw the half of the torn sleeve to her feet and stepped on it. Then, she cried, you all teamed up to bully me. It was a lot of fun at this side. No one saw that someone was approaching. Suddenly a calm voice came in, who is so bold to even dare to bully my little cousin sister. The tone was obviously full of tease. Xu Huan's heart jumped and subconsciously lowered her eyes. When Zhang Hanfang heard this voice, she hated it so much that her teeth became itchy. However, it happened that she was in an awkward situation right now. Just the thought that what had happened just now had fallen into Gu Xiran's eyes, she felt even more embarrassed. She could care less about taking revenge now. She only wiped her tears with her handkerchief and while she was at it, hide her face from shame. When Zhang Zirong saw Gu Xiran come over, he became more enthusiastic. He hurried over to greet him and said laughingly, Great, great, great. Shiran, you came just in time. This little girl of your household is so interesting. Let's make a deal. I will redeem the slave contract of those two sisters who sang last night in exchange for this maid. What do you think? The trouble in front of her was caused by this master who thought himself to be infallible. If it wasn't because of him, Xu Huan might have been hiding in a corner where no one is at now. She would be venting her pent dot up frustrations. How would she be entangled by Zhang Hanfang and how would she be caught by Gu Xiran? Moreover, this morning she just got up early, didn't comb her hair seriously and just made a simple hairstyle for herself. She was also not dressed in the clothes of a maid. Could it be that she looked so much like a maid to let this guy say words like exchanging people without any shame? Thinking like that, Xu Huan got angry. She screamed dejectedly, Dream on. Chapter 89 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Identity Gu Xiran didn't hold in and laughed. 
Zhang Zirong was surprised at her boldness and swept smilingly over her, little girl is a bit unruly. Later, I should discipline you. She was in a bad mood. Cautiousness and patience had been thrown away. Xu Huan decided to follow her desires and be as unruly as she could. She gave him a roll of her eyes. Although Gu Xiran laughed, his heart felt very uncomfortable after his wife was being coveted by another. When he heard Zhang Zirong say that, his eyes showed some displeasure. He slowly said, no need to bother brother Zirong with disciplining. I will discipline her personally when we go back. While talking, he did as if no one was around, grabbed Xu Huan's hand and wanted to leave. Xu Huan subconsciously retracted her hand from his hand. The result was that he turned his hand and grabbed her hand again and tighter. Forget it. There was no need to show their contradiction in front of others and let them make fun of it. Xu Huan let him hold her hand obediently. Seeing that they were so intimate, Zhang Zirong opened his mouth and wanted to say something but hesitated. He patted his forehead a bit vexed. It wasn't easy for Zhang Hanfang to catch an opportunity of revenge. How could she let it go so easily? She panicked in her heart and recovered from the embarrassment. She shouted, Stop! Gu Xiran stopped and laughed, What more does little cousin sister have to say? It's nothing, Zhang Hanfang sneered. I just want to congratulate big cousin brother. This maid of yours is very capable. She even seduced my big brother. Such a bucket of poop was thrown to her, sh, head. If she continued to endure, she wouldn't be human. L.R.G. Xu Huan opened her mouth and said, Does your big brother have the assets to let people seduce him? One sentence made Zhang Zirong's mouth twitch, but he had asked to have the maid first. At this moment, he couldn't defend himself. Zhang Hanfang humped once, raised her head and waited for Gu Xiran's reaction. Unexpectedly, Gu Xiran truly wasn't a generous person. After he heard that, he revealed a fox-like and crafty smile. He circled once around Zhang Zirong and slowly nodded, it truly is like that. I didn't find anything where brother Zirong is better than me. On the height. Xu Huan took over the quickest, you are taller than him. Gu Xiran's lips raised to a beautiful arc, on the body shape. He has the back of a tiger and waist of a bear, on education. Just now, he said himself that he is filled with sorghum and he is a troublemaker and incompetent. Originally, Gu Xiran still wanted to go one, but he saw that Zhang Zirong's face had completely turned dark. So, he reached out, patted his, ZZR, shoulder and comforted, Brother Zirong, pay no attention to it. We are just joking. Right, right. Xu Huan echoed, if you take it seriously, you will lose. Zhang Zirong's expression turned slightly for the better, but his stomach was still filled with displeasure. Gu Xiran laughed again, in fact, you are better than me on a lot of things. At least, your capacity for liquor is better than mine. You are more familiar with the red dot light district than me. And you are proficient in eating, drinking and pleasure. Enough. Zhang Zirong couldn't help himself from letting a fist fly over. Are you praising me or deriding me? Gu Xiran saw that he didn't use full force on the fist. It seemed that he, ZZR, took his, GXR, body into consideration. Hence, he smiled, patted his, ZZR, shoulder lightly and didn't spoke again. Zhang Hanfang poured dirty water on Xu Huan was to see her getting scolded and punished and while she was at it, also look at the face of embarrassment and furiousness of Gu Xiran. Who would have thought that she saw none of that and had been ignored to a side? Seeing that the more they talked, the more the topic changed and she couldn't even interrupt, her nose got crooked from anger. She finally had the opportunity to interject, but when she opened her mouth, she happened to see Gu Xiran cast her a glance with a smile that was not yet a smile. Her heart couldn't help but get cold. She was truly a bit scared, scared that Gu Xiran and Xu Huan would use those deriding tricks on her. Then, she was afraid that she would even have the heart to die. 
Seeing her like this, Gu Xiran smiled slightly. He kicked that half-torn sleeve on the floor and asked, Little cousin sister, do you still have something to say? Zhang Hanfang had a sore point towards that half-torn sleeve. She immediately forced a smile, no dot no. For the first time in her life, she showed weakness. After she finished speaking, she bit her lower lips in annoyance. Xu Huan was still angry at her slander. Before leaving, she left some words, when we meet next time, I hope that Miss Zhang could leave some moral while speaking. Otherwise, don't blame others for not leaving any face for you. You, Zhang Hanfang was so angry that she almost vomited blood. All the scruples had been thrown away. She twisted the silken handkerchief in her hand fiercely. She glared at Gu Xiran and asked, letting a maid contradict me like this, is this your Gu household's way of showing hospitality? If you didn't slander her innocence, I believe that she would be very polite to you. Gu Xiran's gaze turned mockingly. Moreover, who is a maid? According to the rules, you will have to call her cousin sister. In. Law. Cousin. Cousin. Sister. In. Law, the lethality of this sentence wasn't small. It was like thunder had hit Zhang Hanfang. She went blank on spot. Zhang Zirong's state wasn't much better than hers. His brain was also in a mess. Even Mingguan who had been pretended to be invisible had widened her eyes in surprise. She stared secretly at Xu Huan. Gu household's second young mistress. Looked a bit childish. A light green colored gauze dress. The workmanship of the fabric was very refined. However, the color of the dress was extremely light and would also let the person appear extremely plain. Only that pair of bright eyes, beautiful lips and the small ruby earrings made her appear a bit eye-dot-catching. Aside from that, she only had an unremarkable agarwood hairpin and didn't wear any other jewelry. This kind of person who presented herself without any make-dot-up truly didn't look like Gu household's second young mistress. Mingguan sneaked a peek at her miss and discovered that Zhang Hanfang worn jewelry on every place she could wear jewelry. Although, she didn't like the tacky silver and gold, but there were a lot of jade and jewels. With her every movement, they made ding-dang sounds and looked very gorgeous and resplendent. This was the daughters from rich family that she, M, was used to seeing. In fact, not to mention Zhang Hanfang, even the jewelries on herself was more than Xu Huan's. As the saying goes, don't worry about not knowing the goods, but about comparing them humans were also the same. Ming Luan was comparing. Zhang Hanfang was also comparing herself with Xu Huan. After this comparison, she revealed a faint smile. The smile was somewhat sweet and elegant that people couldn't help but have a good opinion about her. However, the moment she opened her mouth, she would ruin the bearing of a well-dot-bred young lady that she rarely showed. Instead, it made people feel that she was repulsive. She said, I almost forgot. Cousin sister dot in dot law came from a poor family. Naturally, you don't have much dowry. It made me have an error in judgment and mistook you for a maid. Cousin sister dot in dot law, if one doesn't know, one is not guilty. If I was rude in the past, don't take offense. While talking, she looked smilingly at Gu Shiran, big cousin brother, your Gu household has boxes filled with gold, why didn't you let people made some head ornaments for cousin sister dot in dot law? Today, it was me who mistook her. We are relatives. This matter would pass if I apologize. I am afraid that tomorrow, someone else will mistook her and would ask cousin sister dot in dot law to bring tea and pour water. Wouldn't it then let cousin sister dot in dot law suffer grievances? Before, they didn't know Xu Huan's identity, Zhang Zirong wouldn't mind Zhang Hanfang's impoliteness. Now, hearing her talking like this, he frowned and yelled at her, Hanfang. I cannot bear to see cousin sister dot in dot law suffer grievances and seek justice for her. While Zhang Hanfang talked, she warmly grabbed Xu Huan's hand and said, if big cousin brother is stingy and didn't want to let people make jewelries for cousin sister dot in dot law, I still have some jewelries from a few years ago. Although, they are a bit old, 
but they are better than the ones maids wear. If cousin sister dot and dot law doesn't mind, then I will gift them to you. Chapter 90 You are listening at novel full dot audio. The silence Xu Huan was also someone not easy to bully. After her identity was made in the open, there was no reason for her to endure the taunting of another. She retrieved her hand immediately and said faintly, little cousin sister is joking. According to the rules, you call me cousin sister dot in dot law, it should be me who should gift you a gift of the first meeting. While talking, she touched that bracelet made of beeswax on Zhang Hanfang's wrist and smiled, such a coincidence. I didn't wear anything with me today when I went out, but I did bring a bracelet. While she talked, she took out a bracelet with the pattern of carved flowers from the purse she wore on her waist and gently put it in Zhang Hanfang's hand, it's not something truly good. Little cousin sister, don't laugh at me and keep it to reward people. Zhang Hanfang knew for sure that she, sh, couldn't bring out anything worth much money, hence, the smile on her, zhf, face became double as sweet. She rushed to look down to see what kind of shabby thing it was and then be picky and taunt her a bit. She didn't expect that she just looked, when the one who went blank was her. The taunting words that was on the tip of her tongue had also been swallowed back. She grew up with brocade garments and jade meals. Even if her taste wasn't very high, but she still had the eyes that knew how to appreciate a good. With one glance, she saw that the carving of the bracelet was exquisite and the material used was the top dot grade cow horn agarwood. Although, it was not comparable to redwood, but compared to the beeswax bracelet on her wrist, one's value was in the sky and the other on the ground. It was clear which one was better. She only thought about ridiculing others, but she was counterattacked without even a word by the other party. Her expression immediately turned bad. Ming Wan saw that she, ZHF, just silently stood there, she also got curious. She moved her head a bit over to take a look. In the end, Zhang Hanfang swept a glance over her, scaring her so much that her body trembled. She wanted to say something to please her and forced a smile, this wood dot carved bracelet is so dark. This slave dot don't see what is good about it dot presumably, it isn't better dot isn't better than sandalwood bracelet in Mrs. Room. She wasn't as arrogant as Peiyu. It was hard for to say these praises and devaluation. Hence, she stuttered and confidence could absolutely not be seen. Fortunately, she wasn't bold in confidence and still speculated, otherwise Zhang Hanfang would have lost a bigger face. However, even like this, Zhang Hanfang wasn't lightly humiliated. The moment she opened her mouth, she reprimanded Mingguan, thing who has no knowledge. What nonsense are you sprouting? After the boot dot lick didn't fell on the boot, Mingguan lowered her head with grievance and tears in her eyes. She didn't talk anymore. Zhang Hanfang still felt that it was hard to take. Her face was blue and white for a while. She put that agarwood bracelet back in Xu Huan's hand and forced a smile, agarwood is only rare. It isn't as good as what people say. I've disliked it ever since young. It's better for cousin sister dot in dot law to leave it for yourself. These words were to strengthen her face. As long as no one exposed her, she would be able to let this matter pass vaguely like that. It happened that Zhang Hanfang had a big brother who disliked her as much as she disliked him. He had to come over to cut the ground from under her feet. He laughed at the side, you don't like it. A few days ago when Miss Lin had her hairpin ceremony and gave a feast, after you went there and saw the flower bracelet carved from horn agarwood that eldest cousin sister dot in dot law wore, didn't you talked about it often for a few days and even sent a servant to search in the shops. In the end, you found one that is not even as good as this one and the price was high. You pestered mother for a long time and she still refused to buy it for you. Now, someone was giving you one for free. I think you shouldn't tweak so much and just accept it. The eldest cousin sister dot in dot law that he mentioned was no one else than Gu Shijian's wife Fang Shi. No need to ask about that flower carved bracelet from Horn Agarwood. It was the one that Xu Huan sent as a gift. It was just that he and Zhang Hanfang didn't know. 
Even if Zhang Hanfang didn't know, she was already ashamed with the desire to die because of him. In her heart, she had crushed his bones and turned him into ashes countless of times. She said angrily with a crying voice, What nonsense are you talking about? I don't like it as I don't like it. What is so great about it? It's only worthy to serve as an incense in the incense burner. It's beneath my dignity to wear such a thing. The tone was like when one was unable to eat grapes and say that they tasted sour and no one continued on what she was saying and only looked at her silently. There was a feeling that they were looking at her as if they were looking at a monkey. Zhang Hanfang was extremely proud. How could she stand this? She couldn't stand it anymore, fiercely stomped her feet, turned and ran away. Mississippi, Mingluan hesitated a moment and then hurriedly chased after her. Xu Huan only counterattacked as self.defense. After she made Zhang Hanfang so angry that she ran away, she didn't feel that there was something happy to be about. She only sighed from relief. Finally, she didn't have to be entangled any longer with this bratty and spoiled miss. However, when she lowered her head and saw the agarwood bracelet, she suddenly laughed. Very well. It seemed that she encountered someone who liked face and would go through sheer of hell for it. Occasionally, that would be a benefit. At least, this time, she saved an agarwood bracelet. She put the agarwood bracelet on her wrist and looked at Zhang Zirong. She felt that this person wasn't as hateful as his little sister. Just now, she teased him together with Gu Xiran, but he didn't get angry. She couldn't help but feel some good feelings towards him. She smiled slightly at him and said, I'm sorry about just now. They were all jokes. Don't take them too seriously. Zhang Zirong shook his head and said, It is me who should apologize. Before, I didn't know. He didn't continue, but everything was clear. Xu Huan lowered her head and sighed. She also didn't say anything more. At a side, when Gu Xiran saw them talking like that, he felt a bit jealous. There were signs that his expression would turn dark. Zhang Zirong was tactful and smiled, I will go take a look, lest my little sister went crazy and threw things again. After he said that, he left. Only Xu Huan and Gu Xiran were left on the curved bridge. The strong feeling of loss and sadness returned again. Xu Huan didn't want to bother with this person next to her. She leaned on the bridge to look at the fishes and lotus leaves in the lake. She completely ignored his existence. After being silent for a while, Gu Xiran slowly asked, Do you want to listen to the explanation? Xu Huan's lips twitched, no need. Gu Xiran lowered his eyes and didn't say more. The kind of thing like explanation should only be done when the other party was willing to listen. Otherwise, it would be like he was covering his faults. At this moment, Xu Huan was very mad. He knew that she was unwilling to listen. His question was just a surplus. Gu Xiran sighed lightly. He put his hands behind his back, stood next to her and accompanied her to see this picturesque scenery. It was just that there was an unexplainable and unclear melancholy in his heart. Silence was a very strange state. Sometimes, it would let people feel embarrassed. Sometimes, it would let people constrain or repress their emotions. Sometimes, it could also let people feel calm. Xu Huan's emotions had changed many times this day. Shock, joy, anger, sorrow, fidgety. The ups and downs of her emotional state made her very tired. Until now, listening to the birds in the distance, feeling the blowing wind that was a bit warm but also had the moisture of the lake and after she took two deep breaths, did she feel her emotions ease down and became calm as the lake with an occasional ripple. She felt a bit grateful towards Gu Xiran's tactfulness. The person next to her would let her get angry, would tease her into embarrassment, would make her speechless and would make her sad like today, but nothing that he did would make her hate him. Fortunately, this kind of person who would let her be helpless, unable to hate nor dislike him was destined to not belong to her. Otherwise, she would be at his mercy for her whole life. Would she be able to live then? 
However, that she could think it through didn't mean that she could let go. If she wanted to get relief, it would take time. This was also the only thing that she had plenty of at the moment. Xu Huan took a deep breath, raised her head, narrowed her eyes and looked at the sky in the distance. She laughed mockingly at herself. Gu Xiran took her expressions deep in his eyes. Suddenly, he got inexplicable panic and involuntarily reached out to hold her hand. Xu Huan was startled and looked up at him. She retrieved her hand without batting an eyelid, turned and said, I'm tired. Let's go back. In the end, she still had to go back to Japanese Rose Building. Where else could she still go now? The roads around her had been cut off. Even if the outside were full of thistles and thorns, the without choice her would still need to get out and make her way in the world. Looking at her whole demeanor that showed rejection and how she turned without hesitation. Gu Xiran's hand was empty. His heart also followed to be empty. Chapter 91 You are listening at NovelFull.audio The emotional outburst a green handkerchief was wrapped around concubine Yun's hand. Pulling it, loosening it, loosening it and pulling it repeatedly a countless of times until the handkerchief was completely soaked in sweat. Xiangqin came in, poured tea and sneaked a glance at the handkerchief in her, why, hand. Then, she looked at her, why, calm face, secretly sighed and said, concubine, have some tea to moisten your throat. Concubine Yun didn't even look at her. Her eyes had been fixed on the outside. She said, put it on the table. Her voice was calm without any ripples, but inside her heart was already very chaotic like the handkerchief that had lost shape in her hand. At the time of the incident, when Xu Huan ran out of Japanese Rose Building, she clearly saw heartache and worry on Gu Xiran's face. Although, those emotions disappeared in a moment, but it was enough to make her lose all hope. She had always known that Gu Xiran liked Xu Huan. She also took all that kind of tacit harmonious understanding and their intimacy that couldn't be put into words into her eyes. She often paced back and forth painfully and couldn't sleep at night. However, she had never lost all hope. On the age, she wasn't as young as Xu Huan. On appearance, she and Xu Huan had their own merits. On education, she couldn't say that she had great erudition, but she had been involved in the zither, chest, calligraphy, painting and embroidery. She only lost on the identity. She believed that Gu Xiran only overlooked her good temporarily and forgot the gentleness he treated her with in the past. She knew that there was no man who wasn't greedy for the beauty and who didn't like to have wives and concubines in large numbers. The most important thing was that she didn't want him to only favor her, she only hoped his gaze could fell onto her once again. Even if it was only occasionally, it would be enough. Hence, she schemed calmly and collected. Even if she failed again and again, she didn't get angry or discouraged. She still waited quietly, hoping that one day his gentleness would come back. Until today, she discovered that everything was her deceiving herself. The thing that Gu Xiran felt for Xu Huan was not as easy as liking and he disdained to look back at her, why? The handkerchief was clenched too tightly and hurt her hand, but this kind of pain was insignificant compared to the pain in her heart. Concubine Yun still wrapped and wrapped that handkerchief around her hand until she couldn't wrap anymore. She stood up. She finally saw the figures of Xu Huan and Gu Xiran appear in the courtyard. She hesitated for a moment and then went to greet them. The storm she expected didn't come. When Xu Huan saw her, her, sh, steps just paused. Then, she, sh, nodded at her and walked past her. She was dumbfounded and glanced at Gu Xiran. His eyes were fainter than before. There were no emotions. He moved away his gaze after just a glimpse. The so dot called turned a blind eye was presumably like this. The heart of concubine Yun that had already became numb from pain began to hurt once again. If they scolded or punished her, she would feel more relieved in her heart. Treating her faintly like this as if nothing had happened, truly made her feel at loss for what to do. 
She stayed where she was when Mei Jing who went out to search for Xu Huan returned with her head hanging dispiritedly. When Mei Jing saw her, she didn't smile like usual nor called concubine in a sweet voice. Instead, she looked at her, why, with a strange gaze. Then, she lowered her head and pretended to have not seen her. She, M, quickly waked over. After a while, she, Y, heard the clear voice of Mei Jing from the main room. Second young mistress, you have returned. Xu Huan was sitting on a chair in daze. When she heard this, she raised her head and saw Mei Jing came at her happily. Her heart couldn't help but warm up and smiled at her, M. Mei Jing would have felt that it was normal if she had cried. After a short while, Mei Jing immediately felt that things were serious. The worry she had put down couldn't help but raise again in her heart. She sneaked a glance at Gu Xiran. She saw that he stared at the ground. She didn't know what he was thinking about. There was a weird repressing atmosphere in the room. Mei Jing didn't know what to do. After she hesitated for a moment, she walked to Xu Huan and knelt. Xu Huan was a bit surprised, what are you doing? Mei Jing lowered her head and said, it's my fault. I didn't guard the room well. I asked second young mistress to punish me. Xu Huan pulled her up, it's not your fault. No. It's my fault. Mei Jing retreated back two steps on her knees and refused to get up. Before you went out you told me to wait for second young master to wake up and serve him to wash up, but I. She didn't continue, but Xu Huan understood. If she, M, wasn't present, it must be because someone used an excuse to send her away. But, what meaning did it have to continue to inquire deep inside of this? Some things could only happen if both were willing. Since Xu Huan had decided to discard it, she wasn't willing to think about it anymore. It would only cost the feelings between them. Get up, Xu Huan said faintly. Pack up the things for me, Mei Jing was dumbfounded, second young mistress, you. Xu Huan got up from the chair and said, I'm tired of living here. I will move to another place. The thing that made her the most tired about this whole matter was that Gu Xiran and concubine Yun lost their heads without care for the place. Here was her bedroom. How could she continue to live here? How could she endure it here? This time, she had to move. It was the best if she could get the farthest away. What the eye doesn't see, the heart doesn't grieve over. Mei Jing panicked and wanted to persuade but she didn't know how to persuade. She could only get up and looked at Gu Xiran with a gaze requesting for help. Gu Xiran had his eyes closed at the moment. As if he seemed to know her helplessness, he said in a calm tone, Do as your second young mistress has ordered. You and Hui Yun go as well to serve her. Seeing that he has no intention to reconcile, Mei Jing was very shocked. The worry in her heart increased. After she hesitated for a moment, she asked, Big sister Hui Yun is also going. Then, don't second young master need to leave someone to serve here. Only now did Gu Xiran open his eyes and said faintly, I will naturally also follow her over. Xu Huan was tormented for the whole day. She was very thirsty. At this moment, she was holding a cup of tea to drink. Hearing him say that, all the tea in her mouth sprayed out and she almost choked herself to death. Gu Xiran. Xu Huan's tone changed. She put down the cup hard on the table. Mother of asterisk 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 asterisk, you are too shameless. The swearing that she had held back for a long time finally came out. To hell with the self. Restraint. Bullshit the elegant demeanor. She didn't want any of it anymore. She also couldn't care anymore whether she would become a joke. Now, her emotions were boiling. She just wanted to growl. Gu Xiran shook his head and looked a bit helplessly at her, not allowed to swear. Not allowed. Not allowed. It was again not allowed. Who did he think he was? Xu Huan directly retorted, You don't have the right to bother with my affairs. You are my wife. 
If I don't bother with your affairs, who will bother with them? Wife. Xu Huan really became furious. Wife, your ass. Don't use this word to disgust me. You know very well what is between us. Could it be that you want the play dot acting to turn into reality, fiction comes true slash fake marriage turn into a real one? Who would think that Gu Xiran would nod his head very seriously and say, I want. Xu Huan went blank for a moment. Then, she picked up the teacup and threw it at him like a concealed weapon. Then, when you are rolling back and forth with another person in my bed, why didn't you think that I am your wife then? The teacup went sideways, slammed in the wall and broke into pieces. Gu Xiran looked at the mess and smilingly casted her a sidelong glance, did you see it? F asterisk asterisk asterisk. This question was despicable, sinister, vulgar and shameless. Wasn't it enough that she had seen them with disorderly clothes and their faces full of spring, lust, in broad daylight behind closed doors? Could it be that it would only count if she knelt in front of the bed, observe in close distance and catch them in act? Xu Huan almost vomited blood because of him. Just when she was thinking about what kind of vicious and sharp words she should use to attack him in order to express the anger in her heart, she saw that he suddenly got up and said to Mei Jing who had froze in place because of their quarrel, Go. Go call Yun Yen. Chapter 92 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. The search Mei Jing had never seen Xu Huan flip out. She had long lost her soul. When Gu Xiran ordered her, her soul hasn't returned yet. She asked blankly, what? Gu Xiran retrieved the smile on his. His eyes turned solemn and said, call Yun Yen here. Only now did Mei Jing understood. She quickly ran out with a belly full of doubts to go call concubine Yun. Xu Huan was also puzzled and asked, what do you want to do? Could it be that he thought that she hasn't lost enough face today and wanted to call some more people to watch her perform the lioness from Hadong Roars Gu Xiran seemed to understand what she was thinking. He turned his gaze and said, don't worry. Your female prestige of just now had long been heard by those on the outside. Xu Huan felt embarrassed. She lost half of her anger. She sat on the chair to observe what would happen next. Concubine Yun quickly followed Mei Jing inside with lowered eyes. She didn't speak and knelt in front of Xu Huan first before she said, Yun Yen knows my wrongdoing. Asking second young mistress for punishment. In this era, the status between a wife and a concubine was very clear. If Xu Huan wanted to punish her, let alone that Xu Huan caught her mistake, even if there was no reason, she would have to bear with the punishment and also couldn't show the slightest dissatisfaction. Hence, the smartest approach was admitting her mistakes. Unexpectedly, Mei Jing didn't make it clear that the one who called her in wasn't Xu Huan but Gu Xiran. Therefore, she, Y, heard him say, talk. The word was short but the imposing tone of the word was unquestionable. Concubine Yun was startled for a moment. She lowered her eyebrows, second young master, what do you want me to say? The key to this sentence lay in the two words, you want. Its meaning was though dot provoking. Gu Xiran narrowed his eyes slightly. He truly got angry in his heart, but his tone was even fainter, I don't like to repeat myself. It's best you put away those strategies and schemes in front of me. Concubine Yun's heart hurt. She forced away her tears and said, Second young master, Yen truly doesn't know what you want me to say. Very well. Gu Xiran nodded his head slightly and didn't look at her anymore. He said to Mei Jing, Search. Bring two people and search her residence. Bring every unfamiliar thing you see to me. Yes. This time Mei Jing reacted quickly, turned and left. Concubine Yun paled, but she still knelt very straight and didn't move. Xu Huan glanced at her and glanced at Gu Xiran. She seemed to have come to some understanding in her heart. Her eyes showed some deep thoughts. The room was quiet for a while. Even the sound of breathing couldn't be heard clearly. That they came to stay temporarily in the resort. They didn't bring much. 
it was natural very easy to search for something. Not long after Mei Jing was gone, she returned with a few paper bags. She put them on the table and said, Second young master, I didn't see any unfamiliar things in concubine Yun's room. Only these few bags of medicinal herbs. I don't know what they are used for. Gu Xiran swept a glance at those paper bags. He didn't bother to go identify the and asked concubine Yun directly, what kind of medicinal herbs are these? Concubine Yun answered calmly, they are the medicinal herbs that second young master used in the past. Yen thought that it was better to be prepared just in case and felt more at ease by bringing them. Gu Xiran smiled faintly, I have to thank you for your careful consideration, then. He said this with sarcasm, concubine Yen's voice carried a sorrow that was not easy to detect, this is what Yen should do. It's not worthy of second young master's gratitude. Gu Xiran nodded and was silent for a while. Was this the so dot called big thunders but small rain? Xu Huan almost wanted to throw a glance at him that said she looked down upon him, when she suddenly heard him say, what? You still want me to wait? Wait for what? Everyone was confused. Fortunately, he opened his mouth quickly again, do you want to take out the things on your body or do you want me to let Mei Jing search for them? Concubine Yun's body shook slightly. She hesitated for a moment, then took down the purse on her waist and took out everything piece by piece. Gu Xiran urged, and your sleeves. This time, Concubine Yun didn't hold back. After she took out the small bag hidden in her sleeve, she lowered her head. The tears fell. The dry ground was quickly stained with tears. The room was silent again. Gu Xiran bent over to pick up the bag on the ground. He threw it on the table and said to Mei Jing, take these things to Bamboo Pavilion. Mei Jing vaguely understood some things and didn't dare to delay. She grabbed the tea tray, put those things on it and brought them away. Also, Gu Xiran shouted to stop her. Take the incense burner in my room with you. Let Dr. Ji identify what kind of incense was burned inside. The last sentence, he said it word by word while he stared at concubine Yun. Every word seemed to carry an invisible pressure. Concubine Yun couldn't hold it in anymore and sobbed, second young master, no need to bother that I will say it. The opportunity should be grasped by oneself. If she pushed it away with both hands, it would be difficult to get it back. At this time, Gu Xiran was cold and indifferent. He turned a deaf ear to concubine Yun's words. He only said to Mei Jing who froze there and didn't know what to do, still not going. Mei Jing took the tea tray and ran. Concubine Yun fell to the ground and couldn't stop her crying sounds. Someone crying in front of her face felt very awkward. Xu Huan moved a bit uncomfortable. This thing was closely related to her. She had no reason to speak up for concubine Yun. Moreover, she was truly tired of her, why? Looking at this situation, no matter how the situation had happened, concubine Yun certainly played some tricks. Since she had the courage to do it, she didn't have the courage to admit. Mei Jing returned quickly. When she entered, the way she looked at concubine Yun was complicated. She hesitated for a moment and then put the tea tray on the table. She said, Dr. G said that among these herbs, there were some that second young master used to eat. There were also some. Gu Xiran narrowed his eyes, speak. Mei Jing was so embarrassed that she wanted to die, it stopped miscarriage prevention medicine. Fortunately, Xu Huan didn't drink water this time, otherwise, she would spray it out once again. However, her disappointing gaze turned to Gu Xiran and she sneered, could this be considered, playing with fire and get burnt? It happened that Mei Jing added oil to the fire, Dr. Ji said dot congratulations second young master. After she said this, she wanted to cry. It was not her who voluntarily wanted to say this. It was Ji Danqing who wanted her to pass this message. As a maid, she mustn't conceal anything when passing a message. This was the rule of Gu household. Truly need to congratulate second young master. 
Xu Huan suddenly stood up. She didn't want to look at this farce anymore. She went straight to the door. She didn't expect to be grabbed by Gu Xiran. He smiled bitterly, not mine. Ji Danqing very well played. He had always known that this doctor wasn't as simple and harmless as he showed on the surface. However, he didn't expect that the cold humor he, JDQ, occasionally showed would bring calamity to people. It made Gu Xiran got the impulse to sharpen his sword and battle with him, JDQ. Before today, if Xu Huan had encountered such a thing, she would only hide her emotions in her heart. However, now the situation was different. She also didn't have to hide anymore and expressed her anger, let go. If he let go, it would be that she was so close yet worlds apart. Gu Xiran naturally would ignore her and only said dejectedly to concubine Yun, give me an explanation. One couldn't hide this kind of thing. Xu Huan could misunderstand, but Gu Xiran would not be unclear. Concubine Yun couldn't afford to bear the crime of engaging in an illicit sexual relationship with another. She could only choke with sobs, that medicine that I just prepared it that I'm not. The words were said intermittent and vaguely, but the meaning was very clear. Xu Huan was shocked for a moment and was still hesitating whether she should leave determinately when she heard Mei Jing rush to say, Second young mistress, lessen your anger. I haven't finished reporting yet. Teal note. I am highly suspicious that Mei Jing had turned into a black dot belly. Chapter 93 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. The truth the matter turned a thousand times, giving people a headache. After all, she hadn't grown up in such a complicated environment. Xu Huan truly couldn't understand why concubine Yun would prepare for miscarriage prevention medication in advance. However, she was somewhat dejected at her judgment. Sure enough, many things weren't as how they appeared and that what you see and hear was not always the truth. At this moment, she was also curious about what Mei Jing still had to say. Therefore, she temporarily ignored those complicated emotions in her heart that she didn't understand and stopped her footsteps. Mei Jing hurriedly put the tea tray in front of her, pointed at the incense burner and said, Dr. Ji said that the incense in the incense burner is sweet dream incense. However, this kind had a few ingredients that would make people feel calm and the effect of hastening the sleep was also better than those sold outside. Usually, when Gu Xiran was asleep, Concubine Yun would habitually burn such sweet dream incense. Xu Huan was already very familiar with the aroma. Before, when Concubine Yun opened the door, it was the same sweet aroma that came from the room. Hence, she was very puzzled to why Gu Xiran would let Dr. Ji identify it and she also didn't understand why Concubine Yun would be so afraid of this to take the initiative to confess. She thought for a moment and then said, Continue. Mei Jing picked up a small bag that was resting on the corner of the tea tray. That was what concubine Yun had previously taken out of her sleeve. She hesitated and said, inside here is loaded with a few ordinary herbs. Usually it's used to alleviate internal heat. It's just that after drinking it and smelling that sweet dream incense, there that there would be a strong aphrodisiac effect. A sentence was said stuttered. The face of Mei Jing turned hot and didn't dare to look at anyone. Concubine Yun tried to suppress her sobbing sounds. She really wanted to completely disappear, but there was no possibility that such a wish would come true. Soon, she heard that close yet distant voice of Gu Xiran, do you want to say what happened next yourself? The tone of the question was unquestionable. Concubine's head almost pressed on her chest. She used a faint and wooden tone that even she was unfamiliar with. She knew that Gu Xiran went to a drinking party last night, but she didn't know whether he got drunk or not. Until this morning, she got tempied when Xu Huan, before she went out reminded her, why, to bring a hangover soup for Gu Xiran when he wakes up. She had already been taken in Gu household for more than a year. Before, Gu Xiran was ill. She had the mind, to consummate the marriage, but he was weakly. Now, his body was getting better each passing day, but there was Xu Huan. He no longer spared any glances at her. 
she also got anxious. A childless concubine could be driven out of the residence any moment. She could even be sold or gifted to another. Her fate would be worse than Huayin's. Hence, she got tempted. When she came to the realization about what she was doing, that soup to alleviate the heat was already done. The chance of getting such an opportunity was extremely low. She harbored the thought that Gu Xiran was only treating her coldly temporarily. Plus, today was her birthday. According to Gu Xiran's temperament of the past, he would coax and make her happy this day. Moreover, usually when Xu Huan went out, she would return at Wuxia, 11.00.13.00. Under the circumstances where the time was right and the conditions were favorable, she wanted to make a bet. Even if she couldn't get back the affection that Gu Xiran had for her in the past, it would also be great if she could get pregnant. At least, she didn't have to fret any more in the future and worry while trembling in fear that she would be driven out of Gu household. Therefore, she drank the soup first. Then, she sent Mei Jing away to go watch the tailor make the clothes. Finally, when she entered Gu Xiran's bedroom to light the sweet dream incense, she took the opportunity to knock over the ink slab to wake him up. Conveniently, she handed him the hangover soup. It was said to be a hangover soup. After drinking it, the hangover and headache would ease. Concubine Yun narrated woodenly, I thought I was lucky. Second young master was drunk and after he drank the soup, I let Xiangqin bury the dregs of the decoction in the ground under the flowers. The incense inside the incense burner was also the sweet dream incense that I always used. Second young master dot wouldn't realize that I have slipped some things in his soup. After listening to this, there was no sound in the room. Only the whining of the autumn cicada could be heard. Xu Huan was dumbfounded. Mei Jing frowned. Gu Xiran let out a sigh or relief and shook his head. Last night, he came back late. Although, he wasn't dead drunk, but he still got a headache. Not to mention that he hadn't slept enough, and he heard Xu Huan remind concubine Yun to bring in hangover soup. Therefore, he took the soup in days and drank it. Then, he continued to sleep. Concubine Yun put a large amount of the sweet dream incense in the burner. Plus, the windows and door were closed. The decoction took effect quickly. In his dreams, he had a feeling of a burning desire. It was inevitable that he would dream about some spring things. Then, he felt a smooth and agile hand wander around his body and even sneaked into his clothes. Under the effect of the decoction, he couldn't tell whether this was the reality or a dream. Until when he felt someone rush into his embrace and put the soft and hot lips on his neck did he suddenly got awakened by the shock. When he opened his eyes and saw that it was concubine Yun, he was so shocked that his body was full of cold sweat that lessened the effect of the decoction. Under normal circumstances, it would be difficult for a man to refuse this kind of act of throwing oneself into somebody's arms. Moreover, he was drugged. The feeling of his body was extraordinarily keen and his desire was almost strong enough to swallow his self-control. Fortunately, it was just almost. Dot he somewhat knew about those hesitations and struggles of Xu Huan of these past few days. He also knew that with her identity as someone who had time dot traveled, she would be unable to accept two women sharing a man. If she could accept it, it would be because she was forced to compromise by the survival pressure of reality, but she would be depressed for her whole life and she would certainly regret it one day, or she would completely abandon her feelings for him, only regard him as an unfamiliar passer.by and be indifferent to the existence of concubine Yun. The feelings he put onto Xu Huan were more than he knew about. No matter which one of the above situations it was, it would be a fatal blow to him. Moreover, Xu Huan's chances of accepting two women sharing a man was so low that it was negligible. The him who liked to have everything under his control immediately woke up under such circumstances. He would not succumb to his desire and spent the next half of his life in regret and pain. What was more, he instantly realized that concubine Yun had tampered with his body. To him that was an extraordinary shame and humiliation. 
It would be strange if he endured it. However, it seemed that the heavens liked to cause trouble for him. He just pressed down his torrent desire and wanted to shout at concubine Yun to let her retreat when Xu Huan kicked the door with imposing manners. What followed was panic and awkwardness. Finally, when the messy clothes fell into Xu Huan's eyes, he knew what it looked like. Aside from feeling morose, there couldn't be other feeling. Until when Xu Huan ran out angrily, heartache immediately filled his heart. However, to be truthful, an uncontrollable rapture rushed through his heart after he became certain of her feelings. It was just, the rapture didn't last for long. When he found her and finally faced her alone, he discovered that no matter how he explained this matter, it would be like he was trying to cover up and make the matters worse. At that moment, he truly wanted to kill someone. Chapter 94 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Wife, don't be angry Concubine Yun knelt with her head lowered. It looked like she was about to become a statue. When Xu Huan looked at her, she could only use the expression not to know whether to laugh or cry to describe her sh feelings. It turned out that all of this originated from some sentences she had said inadvertently. Last night, second young master got drunk. He is still sleeping now. Later, when he wakes up, bring him a bowl of hangover soup. She still remembered every word of those sentences. Then, was she to blame herself? Xu Huan didn't have the hobby to dump mistakes on herself. Concubine Yun was clearly to blame for not having a good conscience. Those sentences just stirred up the emotions she had accumulated over a long period of time and that was on the verge of exploding. She just turned those sentences into her driving force for the actual action. Even if it was not this time, it would be next time. The emotions in her, sh, heart suddenly loosened. Puzzlement arose in her heart. Xu Huan asked frowningly, adding drug to sweet dream incense. Where did you learn this from? This was not something a woman from a respectable family would know. When a woman from a respectable family wanted to fight for favor, it would already be very great that she could get her hands on the usual aphrodisiac. The place where she got such a complicated formula may not be simple. Sure enough, when concubine Yun hear her ask this, her body shook slightly. She opened her mouth, but nothing came out. Xu Huan's mind moved a bit and said, Mei Jing, bring two people to clean up Lotus Pavilion. Mei Jing also knew that she should retreat now. She promised and went away. Only now did concubine Yun say in a low voice, Yun Yen Dot didn't come from a respectable family that I was originally a clean, virgin, personnel at Beauty Courtyard. Hui Yun had long mentioned that old madam wasn't at ease because of concubine Yun's identity. Xu Huan had somewhat guessed some things. When she heard the news, she was not surprised. She only waited for her, why, to continue. I asked that formula from a sister of the courtyard when my slave contract was redeemed that I originally just wanted to be prepared that I in case of need. Don't blame her for saying one simple sentence stuttering. It was indeed a very difficult thing to talk about, especially when it was to expose her deep scheming in front of people. That kind of embarrassment could be imagined. Xu Huan was speechless after hearing that. Gu Xiran took over and faintly said, Retreat and shut yourself up to ponder about your mistakes. Without permission, you can't take half a step outside this Japanese rose building. She had long lost the wishful thinking that she would be lucky. Concubine Yun knew that she couldn't escape the fate of being forced to leave Gu household this time. After she heard that Gu Shiran only let her shut herself up and ponder about her mistakes, she went blank for a moment. Then, she promised in a low voice, got up from the ground and slowly moved the legs that became numb from kneeling. When there was no one else in the room, Gu Xiran turned and looked at Xu Huan. He said with a bitter smile, you accused me wrongly. This tone didn't seem like complaining but more like whining. Xu Huan bit her lips and casted him a sidelong glance. Then, she turned her head and blurted out, serves you right. He indeed deserved it. However, 
After the misunderstanding was clarified and now that they faced each other, she couldn't say any of the ten thousand words she wanted to say in her heart. All became one sigh. Right, 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 it served me right. Gu Shiran cupped his hands and revealed a smile. Wife, don't be angry. Xu Huan humphed once, raised her head and said, there is no sincerity in bowing with the hands. Then, Gu Shiran revealed mischievousness. Punish me with kneeling on the bed sheet at night. What? He still dared to tease her. Xu Huan said, go die. Go to hell, after Gu Shiran heard that, he smiled bitterly while he touched his nose. He didn't say anything, turned and walked to outside. Xu Huan was slightly startled, where are you going? Gu Shiran said obediently, listening to wife's command. Searching for a place to die. After being bullied for so long, Xu Huan had also practiced a lot. She simply sat back on the chair and slowly said, all right. Remember to not jump in the well because it would pollute the source of water. Also, don't commit suicide by hanging on a tree. I'm afraid of haunting ghosts at night. It's best if you look for a farther place and die on the mountain or wilderness. You can give yourself as meal to the wild animals and while you're at it also benefit the flowers and plants. Gu Shiran choked and said, very ruthless. Xu Huan casted him a glance, right, I couldn't be compared to your compassion. After Gu Shiran heard that, he laughed bitterly, do you think I punished Yun Yen too lightly by only letting her shut herself up and ponder about her mistakes? Xu Huan just retorted him without thinking the matter through. She hasn't even thought of that. After she was in daze for a moment, she shook her head and said, how else could you punish her? You are unlikely to go as far as calling people to go beat her with the wooden board. Moreover, unlike Hui Yun, you can't marry her off to a servant. Her identity did is a bit awkward. The identity of a concubine was very awkward. Whether you sold her or gift her to someone, it wouldn't be easy to answer to it when someone asked. The most important thing was that they didn't have the will and viciousness to trample and manipulate another's life. It wasn't that they were overboard good people. It was that they had lived in a relatively civilized environment for a long time and knew how to revere and value a human life. Gu Shiran sighed softly, it's not just awkward. It's simply a thorny problem. Xu Huan was slightly surprised, why do you say that? Gu Shiran said, you don't know. Her slave contract was redeemed by someone else to give to master. Lin Shi is someone easily jealous. Seeing that her, why, appearance was beautiful, she was afraid that master would favor her only after having taken her in. Hence, the moment she was sent to master, Lin Shi went to have a conversation with old madam, Bio talking till here, he laughed bitterly, now, I don't have to hide it from you anymore. I time that traveled like you. The original owner was seriously ill at the time. Lin Shi specifically bought someone from the outside to let the event of great joy drive away his bad luck and hasten his recovery. When old madam agreed, master was still unaware when the person, why, was already sent over to the bedroom of the original owner. Xu opened her mouth, but was speechless for a moment. Then, she muttered, a very good crossing the sea by a trick. It seemed that in order to get favor, one has to learn the 30.6 stratagems. She truly was happy secretly. Fortunately, she timed dot travel to be the main wife and didn't time dot travel to be the concubine. Fortunately, the one she met was him and not someone else. Otherwise, she would have long died not leaving even the skeleton. While thinking, she wondered again, didn't master get angry? Gu Shiran poured a cup of tea, shook his head and said, I don't know. However, the last time when we went to see master, you also have seen it. It couldn't be said that he has feelings for her, but he paid a bit more attention to her than others. Otherwise, why would I say that she was a thorny problem? I truly don't know how to settle her. I can only look at how the situation will be played out. While the two were chatting, they didn't call Gouda by his name. After all, they were used to calling him master and couldn't change it in an instant. 
Xu Huan got a headache because of such a complicated relationship. She suddenly frowned and said, this is not right, ah. Gu Xiran was drinking tea. After he heard that, he put down the teacup and smiled slightly, what? When the original owner took in Yun Yen to let the great event of joy drive away his bad luck and hasten his recovery, you haven't time dot traveled yet. The servants of Gu household wouldn't also casually gossip about this, right? Xu Huan starred in him and said, tell me second young master, how did you get to know these things? Gu Xiran smiled, casted her a sidelong glance and said, I thought you couldn't think of this to ask me about it. Xu Huan was dejected and said, are you saying that my reaction is slow? Gu Xiran smirked and said, I don't dare. Xu Huan pretended to be angry and said, tell me quickly. Gu Xiran didn't answer and said, wait a bit. When he talked, he went to the inner room. After a while, he came out and handed her a small box with a lock on it. You will know after you see this. When Xu Huan lowered her head and looked, she discovered that the lock on the box was already broken. She lifted the lid. Inside of the box was loaded with a stack of handwritten paper. The stack of paper wasn't bound and the size and material of the papers were different from each. It seemed like paper the person conveniently grabbed to write. When she looked at the handwriting, it was the same as the handwriting of the paper she found at the beginning when reading the history book. It obviously came from the same person. This is. Gu Xiran replied for her, the original owner seemed to have the habit to write things up. Sometimes, it was poetry. Sometimes, it was recordings. There was a lot of writings about Gu household. I think he had no one to talk to, so he could only vent the worry on his mind by writing them. When hearing about it, he seemed very miserable. While Xu Huan turned the paper, she asked, where did you found these? Gu Xiran laughed, in the main chamber of Plum Flower Pavilion, there is a secret vault above the bed. This box was inside there. Half of the box was filled with manuscript. Others were found when I flipped through books. Presumably, he just left it there after he had finished writing. Xu Huan looked at him speechlessly. No wonder he stuffed himself in the study when his body wasn't well and he couldn't move freely. It turned out that he was looking for these. Chapter 95 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Concealing the original motive half of the words on the manuscript had already lost color. It was really hard to read. Xu Huan roughly turned over a few pages. She felt that the owner of this manuscript truly had a different personality than the Gu Xiran in front of her. The former was melancholic and had many worries. Only from the handwriting, she could see that he was an indecisive person. Not mentioning anything else, let's mention concubine Yun. He had written a lot about her, but most of it was melancholic and anxiousness. He obviously had good feelings towards concubine Yun, but because of her past identity, he felt that it wasn't right for him to get too close to her. He also showed that he hated his ill and weak body. He had taken in concubine Yun for so long and still treated her as an honored guest. He didn't dare to have any profane thoughts about her. This truly is, Xu Huan couldn't imagine how pent dot up from frustration his life was. Let alone that he was originally ill, even if he didn't have any illness, he would get ill after being anxious and worried for such a long time. As for concubine Yun, she could only describe her with, those who are pathetic always have some insufferable sides. Looking till here, she suddenly remembered something. She bit her lips, raised her head to look at Gu Xiran. She used a very low voice to say, hey, I forgot to ask you about that dot that. The thing she wanted to ask seemed to be very difficult for her to open her mouth and ask about it. Gu Xiran looked at her with interest and asked, what do you want to ask? That dot you. Xu Huan braced her heart and asked, before have dot you and Yun Yen, BL dot net her stuttering appearance was very interesting. Gu Xiran pretended that he didn't understood, have what? Have dot that, Xu Huan suddenly saw the mischievous smile in his eyes. She immediately got annoyed, be more serious. Don't pretend to be stupid. 
Gu Xiran couldn't help himself from smiling, I want, but unfortunately, I didn't have the time. Yu, Xu Huan suddenly stood up. She truly didn't know whether he was speaking the truth or lying. She was annoyed. All right, I was teasing, Gu Xiran smiled. You already looked at the manuscript and should know that she is still a virgin. How will I dare to touch her? If I get tainted with her, I wouldn't be able to get rid of her anymore. Moreover, she is too familiar with the original owner. I'm afraid to reveal loopholes. Didn't you see me hide from her all the time? Xu Huan humphed twice, casted him a sidelong glance and said, Does this mean that if she wasn't a virgin and also that you weren't afraid to reveal loopholes, you can first take some advantage and then toss her away? Twisting words and forcing logic, Gu Xiran said dejectedly. Am I so despicable? Almost. Although she said that, she felt relieved in her heart. Until now did she feel completely at ease. However, when she thought that Gu Xiran had hid his identity of being a time dot traveler for so long from her, she felt a bit unhappy and asked, Why do you hide it from me? Hide what from you? The matter of time dot traveling. This, Gu Xiran's eyes flashed slightly. Looking at how you often reveal loopholes, I felt that it was very funny. If I have told you, then wouldn't it get boring? Xu Huan was somewhat suspicious and said very dejectedly, just like that. Don't fob of me. Gu Xiran lowered his eyes and thought for a moment. Then, he sighed and said, when I just have time traveled, I discovered that this body was weak and ill and I didn't know when I will pass away. That being the case, why tell you to let you be delighted for nothing? Moreover, you never suspected. I couldn't find the right opportunity to tell you and was afraid that I would scare you. This was the half. Truth. In fact, when he met her again in this life, he was determined to protect her for this whole life. However, the promise shouldn't only be all talk. To give her relative freedom and happiness, he must have the corresponding ability. Under the current situation where he needed to rely on Gu household for survival, he didn't want to tell her the truth. Moreover, having the same identity of a time dot traveler would surely become an important link to maintain their relationship. This would affect his judgment of her true feelings. He didn't want her to be at ease with him only because of this special identity. Xu Huan discovered the way he looked at her with was becoming deeper and deeper. Her heartbeat couldn't help but skip a beat. She blurted, have we seen each other before? Why did I get a familiar feeling when I saw you for the first time? There was such a possibility. She had time dot traveled without changing the name, the surname, nor the appearance. Then, he may also be like this. Perhaps, she had seen him before the time dot traveling and that was why she felt familiar. Gu Xirans regained his senses and smiled slightly, otherwise, how could it be said that we are fated? We even encountered such an odd thing like time dot traveling together. Also, we time dot traveled into husband and wife. Dot. Wasn't it a bit exaggerated to talk about fate? However, after Xu Huan was speechless for a while and thought about it, his words seemed reasonable. Then, this was the explanation why he had always been so good to her. But, her heart felt a sense of loss and was somewhat thwarted. He had been good to her because they both had time dot traveled. She was just about to ask this important question when she lost her opportunity. Mei Jing came back and said that everything at Lotus Pavilion had been prepared and asked whether she wanted to move there now. Xu Hua nodded. Of course, she had to move. After she avoided for so long, she dejectedly discovered that she had truly fell in love with Gu Xiran. She didn't want to sleep again on that bed in Japanese Rose Building where he and Concubine Yun had been lying. This was presumably the misophobia that happened because of love and that caused her to not want any contamination of her love. Lotus Pavilion was built by the water. It was located on the side of the artificial lake of the resort. Through the window, one could see the blue waves and the lotus leaves on the waves. The field of view was extremely open. There was just one bad thing about it. 
In the summer, the scenery here was the most prosperous. When the lotus had withered, half of the lake would be destroyed. By then, if you want to admire the lake, you couldn't use your eyes but have to listen with your ears. To the remaining sounds of the lake and the rain. In the past, such artistic conception was only in her imagination. Nowadays, she had the opportunity to experience it and when she got the interest, she could also probably draw a painting with water ink. Xu Huan sat in front of the window and watched idly at the view of the lake outside the window and the busy maids inside the room. Her hand held a pine pipe. When the pipe touched water, the smoke circled around the pin flower stone carving. At this moment, she truly felt that ancient people lived very leisurely. Without the highly developed technology, everything must be done by hand. It made the pace of life slow down a lot. However, this must be the true meaning of living. For example, this written painting. First, one had to spread the paper and grind the ink. Although, it was troublesome, but it had a kind of interesting charm of calmness. It made every piece of paper, every splatter of ink and every ink stone feel like a piece of artwork. Laundry was also the same. Here was not the age of washing machine. That was why the saying, a piece of moon in Chang'an, 10,000 households launder clothes by pounding, circulated around. In the era of no electronic entertainment and air conditioning, one could sit in the courtyard at night in the summer to admire the moon. Even for the making of tea, one had to clean the pot first and then add coal to boil the water. In the meantime, one could invite some friends over to chat and slowly sip the tea. When she thought till here, she heard someone came in with laughter, such refined attitude, being idle. You moved to such a good place without a sound. If it wasn't because when I went to find you, I saw the maids moving things, this humble one would have gone for nothing to Japanese rose building. Xu Huan raised her eyes and looked outside the curtain. She saw that the person who entered the room slowly was Ji Danqing. When Gu Xiran saw him, he, GXR, immediately went to greet him while gnashing his teeth. He said with a smile that was not yet a smile, it's Dr. G who had a refined attitude to even think about how to poke fun at me. Chapter 96 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Retain Ji Danqing walked slowly to Gu Xiran and revealed an elegant smile. This humble one doesn't understand. Where did second young master get that notion? Gu Xiran casted him a sidelong glance and said, Didn't you say to congratulate me? Ji Danqing smiled, Shouldn't it be congratulated when second young master's concubine got pregnant? It was hard for Gu Xiran to be stumped for words, but to find his, JDQ, mistake, he truly couldn't find it. When he was thinking, he heard Ji Danqing say, Seeing that second young master is so angry, could it be? Gu Xiran looked at him helplessly, what? Could it be that the child is not second young masters? Talk less nonsense. There is no such thing at all. Ji Danqing shook his head laughingly and said, what is second young master about? This humble one meant that perhaps that child is not a child that second young master wished for. There were two meanings about why he wouldn't wish for the child. Firstly, he didn't want Yun Yen to become pregnant at this time. After all, the main wife had married him not a long time ago. If the concubine got pregnant, that would be a matter that would sweep the main wife's face. The second meaning was vaguer. Gu Xiran immediately narrowed his eyes and asked, Are you making fun of me this time? Ji Danqing smiled helplessly, Second young master has misunderstood again. This humble one didn't mean that. His eyes were undisturbed and his expression was as gentle and elegant as ever. He didn't show a bit of that he, JDQ, was mocking him, GXR. Gu Xiran had the feeling that his fist landed on cotton. He couldn't help but also be helpless. It was rare to see Gu Xiran stumped for words. Xu Huan couldn't help but laugh and came out of the inner room. She greeted Ji Danqing and said, Dr. Ji, I have something I want to ask you. Ji Danqing had become closer to them and didn't need to be so cautious anymore. He picked a chair and sat on it. 
he tidied his clothes and said gently, please, go on. Xu Huan said, does Dr. Ji also have knowledge about fragrances? Otherwise, how would he have recognized that a few other fragrances that could make people calm were added inside the sweet dream incense of that day? Ji Danqing was someone who would understand by just giving a bit of a hint. One didn't have to use much effort while talking with him. The moment he heard that, he laughed, it couldn't be said that I know very much, but I know a bit. The most important thing is that the formula was leaked out from me. Hence, the moment I saw it, I knew. These words came very faintly from his mouth, but Gu Xiran and Xu Huan were greatly surprised after having heard that. Gu Xiran frowned slightly said, Why do you prescribe such a formula? Ji Danqing was extremely calm, my reputation is well known. All kinds of people come to seek medical treatment. The sick seeks medicine, this humble one would prescribe. As for whether it was the physical illness or mental illness, this little one will not inquire. He was a famous doctor of Jingtian City. His skills were naturally extraordinary. Thinking about the potency of the his, GXR, past medication, Gu Xiran's face turned dark, you are truly a benevolent doctor. Ji Danqing could hear the slight sarcasm in his words, but he still smiled softly, an illness can be cured, a life cannot. The meaning of this was too deep, making people slightly startled. Fortunately, Mei Jing came in with tea. The topic was suddenly changed. After chatting for a while, Ji Danqing lowered his head and drank some tea. He suddenly said, in fact, today I came to say my goodbyes to second young master and mistress. After staying here these past few days, I have been treated with great courtesy and also was able to be idle for a while. However, the mid-autumn festival is approaching. My old servant also had sent people to urge me to go back a few times. I also think it's time to go back. Xu Huan was a bit surprised and asked, you are going to leave now. Mama Du isn't fully recovered yet. She is already alright. If she takes two more doses according to the prescription and pay attention to her health in the future, she would be completely healed by late fall. Xu Huan was still dejected, I haven't finished learning to paint yet. If you leave, I will have no one to ask advice from. Ji Danqing smiled gently, the future is long. I will still have to go to the residence in the future. Why don't I look for an outstanding painter and recommend him to go to the residence for second young mistress? It would be the same then. He insisted on leaving. Xu Huan lowered her head and thought for a moment. She was also helpless. She could only look at Gu Xiran to see whether he had something to say. Gu Xiran said, how about you stay for one more month? I still have to inquire many things from you. When we return to the city together, it would also be cheaper. Ji Danqing was a bit surprised, is second young master not returning to the residence for the mid-autumn festival? I will let little fourth go back first. As for me, Gu Xiran smiled slightly. Is it not that I haven't fully recovered yet? The environment of the resort is elegant. Even if it wasn't for the summer vacation, it is a good place to nourish the health and recover of a disease. Not to mention, there are still many siblings at home who would make the elders happy. It's nothing, if I was missing. Scornful. This guy had become addicted to pretending to be sick. However, when she heard that they didn't need to return to Gu household for the time being, Xu Huan still felt happy. Ji Danqing was still thinking and said, this. Stay for one more month. If there are people who are seriously ill and couldn't wait, trouble the shopkeeper to tell them to come to the resort for the medical treatment. Gu Xiran laughed, otherwise, Dr. Ji's front yard would be as busy as a marketplace. You wouldn't be able to be idle anymore. Right. Xu Huan also helped, stay for a bit more. The autumn air is very cool. We could make two more trips to the mountain. There should also be more of those wilds fruits and the rabbits should have gotten fatter. Even thinking about it would make people drool. Sometimes, people would be in such a contradiction. 
the daily supply of food of the hospital was quite a lot. It was also bought with the money of the public account and it was not necessary to spend Xu Huan's comfort money. However, the food piled up in front of her was not rare anymore. Ji Danqing was presumably someone who liked to be idle once in a while. Hearing how they tried hard to retain him, he couldn't help but smile and said, all right. Then, this humble one would be thick dot faced and stay one more month. After finishing talking about the matter, Ji Danqing stayed for a while more. Seeing that the maids were busy moving things to here, he stood up and wanted to return to Bamboo Pavilion. Gu Xiran sent him out. Suddenly, he lowered his voice and asked, Can I ask you for a prescription? Ji Danqing was surprised. He reached out his hand out of habit to check his, GXR, pulse and asked, Why? Is second young master not feeling well? That's not it. My body is very well. Gu Xiran cased a glance to inside of the room, pulled him a bit farther away and said, that the body is too well is also a troublesome matter. I say, can you write a prescription to avoid a pregnancy for me? It was obviously a very embarrassing request. However, when he said that, he was very calm. Ji Danqing couldn't help but laugh, second young master truly is different. Usually, people come asking for prescriptions to get pregnant. You are the first one asking for a prescription to avoid a pregnancy. He wasn't exaggerating. The ancient people put much importance on heirs. Not mentioning families who could afford children. The wife and concubines would work hard and try hard to get pregnant. Even families who couldn't afford children, when the wife got pregnant, most of them would wait till the day of birth to see whether it was a boy or a girl. If it was a boy, raise him. If it was a girl, sell her. The places that would use prescription to avoid a pregnancy would only be the imperial palace and the brothels. However, these places had their own secret prescriptions. There was no need for them to ask for it. Gu Xiran was also helpless and borrowed a sentence from concubine Yun, just to be prepared. The self-control he had in front of concubine Yun didn't work on Xu Huan. He didn't know how long he could endure sleeping and holding each other every night like that. When Ji Danqing saw that his whole face showed dejection, he couldn't help but smile, right, it's safer for woman to get pregnant after twenty. He was a doctor and knew about this. Gu Xiran didn't want to discuss this kind of problem in detail with others. He casted Ji Danqing a glance and asked, give me an answer. Are you going to give it to me or not? Ji Danqing had always been good at listening to another people's advice. He immediately replied, Give. Xu Huan was in front of the window at this moment and happened to see the two whispering outside. Although, she didn't know what they were talking about, but she suddenly saw Gu Xiran reveal a very unique smile. She didn't know why, but her heart felt uneasy. Chapter 97 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. The night of gentleness time flew quickly during a day of trouble. In a blink of the eye, it had become night. After moving to Lotus Pavilion, the environment felt a bit unfamiliar and after everything that took place today, Xu Huan's state of mind had changed a lot. Therefore, when she sat in front of the dressing table and brushed her hair after having taken a bath, she began to feel a bit uneasy. Before, she had always been escaping. Now, after having realized her feelings for him, how should he face him when they share a bed? This was really a question that would give people headache. As she was thinking, she felt someone coming over. She looked up and saw the figure of Gu Xiran in the bronze mirror. He leaned over, put his chin on her hair and looked at the her in the mirror. His attitude was very intimate. Gu Gu Xiran. Mm -hmm, the person behind her made a sound from his throat. It sounded amorous and tempting. Xu Huan's face burned, I doubt I'm a bit uncomfortable. She already knew that they had a husband and wife relationship, but the original her was mentally apart from this world. The intimacy she had with him was also limited. In her heart, she still saw herself as an unmarried girl and thought that she would likely leave him one day. 
Then, one day she found out that she didn't have a choice anymore. Whether it was in the terms of love or in the terms of identity, her fate was entangled with his from now on. The relationship of husband and wife between them had to continue. Then. We didn't seem to have dated yet, and Dot and had already become husband and wife. She really couldn't adapt to such jumping of the emotions. Gu Shiran smiled very enticingly, I don't mind to date while living as husband and wife. Dot. Xu Huan whispered a protest, very ambiguous words. Not ambiguous, Gu Shiran whispered. His hand already wrapped around her waist. However, there was no other movements. He just hugged her silently like that. Looking at the bronze mirror, her face gradually reddened. You. Xu Huan hesitated for a long time and finally asked, You are good to me because I time dot traveled like you. Gu Xiran was a bit surprised and looked at her uneasy expression. Suddenly, he laughed, because of you. Xu Huan frowned confusedly. Stupid, he scolded helplessly. He hugged her tighter and said, I was good to you because you are you and not someone else. Xu Huan's heart sweetened and then felt embarrassed. She was scolded for being stupid. Why was she still so happy? However, after a few moments, she didn't have the mind to entangle in this question anymore because Gu Xiran suddenly lifted her and carried her to the bed. You, 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 she was a bit panicked. What are you doing? Gu Xian smiled a bit evilly, sleep, ah. What else can I do? We shouldn't progress so fast, Xu Huan so sullen. In the morning, she was still broken dot hearted and sad and hated him very much. At night, they were about to undress and be lovey dot dovey, how could she adapt to such sudden change? The most important thing was that to do a certain thing, one needed to have the mood and a good atmosphere, all right. She didn't want to say goodbye to her chastity on such a chaotic day. Gu Shiran ignored her protest and threw her on the bed. Then, he leaned over to press the her who wanted to escape beneath him. That face with a teasing expression was pressed up closely against her face. His lips even softly rubbed against her lips. The distance between the two had been pulled to zero in an instant. Smelling the faint agarwood scent from his body, Xu Huan was a bit breathless. Her heartbeat immediately quickened and said panicked, Gu Xiran dot don't. Gu Xiran laughed extremely enticing, don't what? Xu Huan was stumped for words and couldn't answer. Gu Xiran ignored her, reached out to explore her belt and began to push her clothes. She truly panicked and became nervous. She cried out involuntarily, don't do it. After she said that, she felt that her face was almost burning. It happened that Gu Xiran's hand didn't stop. While he pushed her clothes, he whispered in her ear, don't do what? This time, she was willing to choke to death instead of answering. Who would have thought that Gu Xiran would laugh and whisper in her ear, Wife, what are you thinking about? I only said to sleep, when had I said to do something else? Xu Huan whispered a protest, then, why are you taking off my clothes? Gu Xiran slightly propped up his body. His finger gently stroked her hot cheek and put her scattered hair behind her ear. His actions were intimate and gentle, making her turn her head and didn't dare to look at him. He laughed teasingly, Wife, if you don't take off your clothes, do you want to sleep with your outer clothes on? Dot. Sigh, she was teased again. This time, the face she had lost was nowhere to be found. Xu Huan began to grind her teeth and said, Gu Xiran, I hate you. Mm. Gu Xiran threw her outer clothing on the bed. Then, he found a comfortable position, hugged her and said, you have to take it easy with the hate. We still have a lifetime. If you used up all the hate at once, then you can only love me to death in the future. Dot. When the face was too thick, even daggers couldn't poke holes in it. Xu Huan had decided to never bother with him again. She twisted her body, wanting to break free from his arms and roll to the corner of the bed to sulk alone. 
Who would have thought that Gu Xiran would hold her tighter and warned her with an amorous voice, if you continue to move, what will happen next is at your own risk, this was a very lethal sentence. Xu Huan didn't dare to struggle again. She helplessly let him hug her and cursed him countless of times in her heart. However, with each curse she cursed him with, she panicked more. She was afraid that the curse would come true. In the end, she could only blame herself for being unlucky, held her fingers and be secretly dejected. Seeing her fuming expression, Gu Xiran felt familiar and had a peace of mind. It was great like this. This was the her who he was familiar with during these days and not the one that he saw this morning on the bridge who was indifferent towards him and made him afraid and feel heartache. He couldn't help but smile. He turned his head and blew out the light on the bedside. Then, he quietly hugged her and closed his eyes. To be able to hold her while sleeping again without having guesses and be afraid that he would lose her, this kind of feeling was truly great. Gu Xiran. Xu Huan couldn't fall asleep for the moment. She had forgotten her own resolution to not bother with him again. She gently called his name in the darkness. He answered in a low voice, M.M. What was your original name? He laughed, it's the same as the one you are calling now. What about you? The same. The appearance also didn't change. Right, right. You are also the same. It's great like this, otherwise, I truly can't get used. His words obviously were pointing at something else. Unfortunately, Xu Huan didn't get the hidden meaning. She still played with her fingers and said, there is a mysterious feeling. I'm wondering whether the two original owners had time dot traveled to our world. That's their business, Gu Xiran said. He grabbed her hand in the darkness and put a thing on the ring finger of her left hand. Sensing a strange chain around her finger, Xu Huan reached out to touch it. She discovered that it was a ring. She was surprised for a moment. There is a kind of sweetness mixed with sorrow flowing in her heart. It made her almost cried out loud. Unconsciously, she buried her head deeply in Gu Xiran's embrace. 